the border. It's Fitzroy Street, St Kilda, and it's the Prince of Wales Hotel, one of the great rock and roll palaces of the South. The scene of many a musical conflagration, the Prince today sees the first ever live appearance in Melbourne of rampaging Roy Slaven and his partner, the indefatigable H.G. Nelson. Hello world. Now in its seventh year, their Saturday radio program has been called a collision between sport and show business. With over a thousand punters in attendance, the scene is set for a big afternoon. Here now are some excerpts from This Sporting Life. And here's HG. Hello, Melbourne. <laughs> hello, Australia. Hello, Asia. Hello, world. And welcome to the Sir Henry Bolte room here in the heart of the Prince of Wales Hotel, Fitzroy Street, St Kilda. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to a Melbourne Comedy Festival super edition of This Sporting Life, heard across the nation on Triple J. What a vast week it's been. Best, brightest and biggest week since the news filtered through that Billy Wyman's boy Steve is about to say yes to Mandy Smith's mum, Patsy. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, who said romance with a capital R was dead? Best, brightest and biggest week since Dangerous Dean Jones was given the biggest kick in the guts of his career when he was not named for the Ashes Tour. And A.B. tells Jonesy to keep at it in probably the worst piece of advice ever offered to anyone at any time. <laughs> Elsewhere in cricket, Queensland, when they had it in the bag, did it again and lost the Shield final to a bunch of no-names at the SCG. <laughs> Golf. And the Shark, after being in a commanding winning position at the US Players' Championship, returns to the clubhouse well off the pace in the final round and in a pathetically desperate bid to retain some vestige of credibility with the world's golfing public, the shark blames his poor form on a pine allergy. Shark, 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 I don't mind you losing, son. I don't mind you being a joke. I don't mind you pretending to be Australian when it suits you. I don't mind because of you, the rest of the world sniggering behind their backs at this great nation of ours. But please, Shark, don't, don't, repeat, don't insult my intelligence with this endless stream of pathetic, stupid, unimaginative excuses for your own hapless failure. And now, without further ado, let me introduce to you a man who has electrified comedy festival crowds all week with his own one-person show, seen nightly at the Shaft Cinema Complex, <laughs> Swanston Street here in Melbourne. Rampaging Roy Slaven, welcome to Melbourne. Woo! Can you set the scene for us here in the Balti, please, son? <laughs> yes, sir, thank you very much, H.G. Nelson. <laughs> I've always loved the Balti, always loved coming back to the Balti, I must say. The Balti, of course, is situated on top of a TAB. Uh, it was designed that way for when Roy did the plans uh, all those years ago to help people in this very moment of crisis. So over to you, Roy. What do you fancy in the 1993 Slipper? Uh, yes, I, I love the Slipper. I, I can't think of it. A, a more important event in setting the coordinates for the future of Australian racing. Look, I love the LKS McKinnon Stakes, don't get me wrong. I love the Villiers, but I love the sight of young two-year-old horses with blokes sitting on them, hitting them. <laughs> and I can't think of a more important race, two-year-old race, I've got to qualify this, I can't think of a more important race for two-year-olds in the world. I'm not just talking Asia, I'm not just talking Australia, I'm talking the world. The, the, I mean, sure, the Villiers is important, but the slipper, the slipper is Australian racing because you've got young, young bucks, you've got young horses, you've got young bits of bone that aren't yet fully formed. I've grabbed a slipper horse. I've tested slipper horses and if you can't, grab a leg and bend it. <laughs> then that horse is too old. I like a horse that there's the possibility that the bloody thing is going to absolutely collapse under the weight of, say, handbrake Harry White, if the handbrake... <laughs> If the handbrake had the good fortune to get a slipper, I would love to see Harry with his handbrake on a young two-year-old filly 
that's never had the sniff of racing before in its life. Looking at the slipper. <laughs> I don't think you can go past Moss Rocket. And uh, now we've uh, been joined uh, at the uh, card table, the Youth Network card table here in the Baldy by a very good friend of ours. And it's great to link up with Andrew Gaze once again. And welcome, Andrew, to the show. Just... And, uh, Andrew, you were saying off mic a little while ago that your, your side is, is uh, favourites for the, uh, the go-round this year. I think so. Uh, this year, I think that we've recruited very, very well. And we've got a, a strong team. And some of the other teams that were up there last year perhaps have not quite as strong as they were last year. So I think most um, experts or so-called experts would have us as being one of the favourites for this year. Andrew, why are there so many Americans? <laughs> Look, I, I, I love basketball, don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, but I've always been of the view that you get a local competition going and, and you have local players. Now, why are there so many Americans playing basketball in local competitions here in Australia? Why is now the, the National Basketball League, the NBL, essentially a, a, a platform for old, hapless, reject <laughs> American players who, who cannot cut the mustard back in their hometown. Old crocs. <laughs> old blokes with buggered knees and buggered hips. They've got very little to offer the game anymore. Granddads! As Why can... is it being paid <laughs> millions to come up here and deny a place for young Australian kiddies to get to do the game? <laughs> As you can see, Andrew, it was easier when I asked the question. <laughs> uh, you're listening to The Life in the Sir Henry Balti Room in the Big SK, Melbourne, Victoria. Well, wherever we go, we like to introduce uh, people to politicians and put the human face, if I can be so bold, back into politics. Uh, you know, comparing politics and football, is it, is it as simple as going in hard early, win the fight, win the match, remember one in, all in, those sort of things? Is it as simple as that? Well, footy's good. You know, people are decent fair, they look after you, they help each other. The old VFA was pretty rugged, it was sort of, you know, the last man standing and yeah. they're all blokes with lots of tattoos up their arms and no teeth and yes. they're a bit scary. So it's become a game for pillows, Phil, is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's a slim hip game these days, isn't it? It is a bit different from the old days, yeah. But isn't that so common for old players who've left the game to say it's nowhere near as tough as it was in my day. I put it to you, Phil, that the game is, is a damn sight tougher than it was in your day. In your day, you didn't have to train. <laughs> in all your day, you just roll up and it was like a picnic. And have a spit. And have a spit. You couldn't get away with that these days, Phil. These days, you've got to be fit. And I put it to you, Phil, that you've never been fit for an instant in your whole life. And so it goes. Every Saturday afternoon, our sporting heroes and heroines line up to take their chances with HG and Roy on the Triple J Youth Network. The result? Plenty of laughs and a lot of satisfied customers. We had a great day. We had a superb day. Yeah. Bring him back to Melbourne as quickly as possible. Oh, I usually listen to him on a Saturday, so I want to see him live. Enjoy it! I just saw the legends of my lifetime there. I was in the same room. Melbourne audiences have taken to them in a big way, yes. Uh, we look forward to them coming down more regularly, actually. 